Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to make a Turbo iOS app. So we can do this by first creating a Rails app, and then we'll go to Xcode and we'll create just a very simple Xcode app. And you'll see how fast it is to get Turbo iOS set up. So the first thing we're gonna do is create a new Rails app. So we can do that by typing Rails new, and then the name of our app. So I think I'm gonna do a cool blog app in this episode. And then I'll also set the CSS framework to Tailwind. Now, the reason why I'm doing this is just to make the default app look a little bit better because without Tailwind, uh, you have to add all the styling yourself. So it's a bit harder. And for this video, it'll just look good. So now that that's finished, I'm gonna CD into our blog app. And then we can start the server by typing in bin dev. So that's how you start the server when you're using Tailwind. And then we can just open up the browser and go to localhost 3000. And we'll see that we have the rail screen and it meets everything set up and we're ready to start developing. So from here, I'm just gonna scaffold a model called post and I'll give it a title and then a body of type rich text. And I'll just run that. Now, since we're using rich text, we also need to run rails action text install commands. We can do that. And then the last thing we're gonna do is just migrate the database with rails db migrate. Then once we do bin slash dev again, we can refresh. We won't see anything here, uh, but if we go to slash posts, we'll see that we have this whole setup for posts and we can go and create a new post. So quickly, I am gonna set that as the root of the application. So to do that, we can just come back into the terminal or you can do this in VS code, but I'm gonna go to the config routes.rb text file. And inside of here at the bottom, I'm gonna uncomment this root and then we could just save the file because it's already going to the post index. Now, when we restart, we'll see on the main uh, URL of our website, it would just be the post page now. This is cool and we can go and create a post. I'm just gonna say like, I love building apps. And you'll see that since we're using action text, we can do stuff like bold text, indented text, and even like hyperlinks. So it's pretty cool, right out of the box. All right, so this looks good. You'll see that the stylings are getting affected. So from here, we have a working simple Rails app. So now I'm gonna go and create the Turbo iOS portion of the app. So we can just keep the server running and then I'm just gonna open up Xcode. So we do it like this. And then now that we have Xcode open, I'm gonna click create new project. And I'll make sure that I have the iOS section selected and then I'll click app, which that should already be default. Then we'll put our product name. So for me, I'm just gonna call it blog app. You might also have to set the organization identifier. So I'm just saying Indigo Tech. Then right is the next part is interface. So by default, it's set to Swift UI. So make sure that you change that to storyboard so that you have the correct files that we're expecting for the Turbo iOS framework. And then also language should be Swift. And then we can just press next. It's gonna ask you where you wanna save your app. So I already made a folder called Turbo iOS apps, but you can really store that anywhere, even on the desktop. So now that we're inside of the Xcode project, the first thing we're gonna do is add Turbo iOS as a dependency. So we can do that by going, making sure that we have this top section selected. And then right inside of the side panel, uh, the target will be selected by default, but go and make sure you're clicking on the project. And then here we can go over to package dependencies and then click the plus icon to add a dependency. So what we're gonna need to do is get the URL to the Hotwire Turbo iOS GitHub, but you can just type that in right here, github.com slash hotwired slash turbo iOS, and you'll see the package. And then we just click add package. This adds the Turbo iOS framework to Xcode. So now that inside of our app, we can reference Turbo iOS. So the next step is to go and we actually have to get the starter template code from the GitHub. So if we look up Turbo iOS quick start guide, we can come in here and we'll see this template code. We're like this is just uh, the code to have a simple working Turbo iOS app. So I'm gonna copy that and then we can replace the whole content of this file. So I'm just pressing command A to select all and then I'll just paste into it. So just like this, we have a working Turbo iOS app. Now you'll see that right in here, there's a URL that they're using and it's set to the Turbo iOS demo by default. But what we can do is we can change this to use localhost. 
All we have to do is remove the HTTPS, change it to HTTP, and then change the URL to our local host to pull in 3000. So now that we have this set, if we just were to start the app right now, we would have a working Turbo iOS app. Got build succeeded. Now it just has to install the app. So you'd want to give it a few seconds, sometimes a few minutes uh, when you're first creating your like your first Xcode apps, because I think it has to install some dependencies. Okay, so now that it loaded, you'll see that we have a fully working Turbo iOS app running on the simulator. We can go navigate to the different pages and we can create a new post. So I'm gonna go create a post on mobile. Hey, this post was created on mobile. We're gonna create a post. And just like that, it's created. We can go back to post. Now, one thing you probably noticed was there was this annoying back button that keeps getting added. So that's kind of the default for Turbo iOS. I don't know why, but one good thing is that we can fix that really easily. So I'm gonna show you that now. So the reason why this is happening is because down in this visit function, every time we run a new navigation request, it's going to create a new visible view controller and then it's gonna push it onto the view controller. So it's gonna have multiple different view controllers that it's pushing. And that's what creates this whole history. So to fix that, we're just gonna uh, push the view controller one time. And then we're also going to define a custom view controller. So I'm gonna do that by creating a new file and I'm gonna have this as a Swift file. And I'm gonna call this a web view controller. And then inside of here, I'm just gonna add some simple code. So what we have here is I'm importing turbo and I'm creating a class web view controller that inherits from the visible view controller. Then we have this view did load function just to make sure that this is working. And then we can also, I guess you add any code uh, like after the view did load. So you can add custom code into this web view controller. And for example, one thing is setting the title. You can set the title of the app to anything you want. So right now you see how at the top it says blog app. And I think it might just take the title from the page that you go to, which actually might be a good thing if you want that to update. But if not, you could just have it set for the whole app. So we could set this to blog app. Now what we're gonna do is go back to the scene delegate and we're gonna need to move some things around. So instead of defining the view controller here, let's define it at the top of the file. So I'm just gonna go up here, type in view controller equals web view controller. So we're also not using uh, the other view controller, we're using our custom view controller. And then we're gonna take this code where we push the view controller onto the navigation controller and we're gonna move that up into the scene so the scene is like the initial code that gets ran uh, when you start your app. So that's why it visits just like the main base URL. So what I'll do is right before we visit, I'm gonna make sure that we push that view controller. So now the code looks something like this, where inside the visit, we're just session visit view controller. But what we need to do is we need to update the single view controller that we have with the URL that we're supposed to visit before we run this code. So we're gonna do that Right before here, we'll say view controller dot visitable URL is equal to URL. So now it's going to have the correct URL from the visit and then we can visit it. All right. So what we're going to do is I'm just going to restart the app and we'll see those new changes. All right. Now we restarted. If we went to go click that same show link, now it works a lot more like a normal app because <laughs> we don't have that back button just popping up. This is pretty cool. Uh, we can update posts. We can edit them destroy them and it all works just like magic right out of the box all right awesome so yeah just like that you can create a simple turbo ios app so i hope you guys found this helpful i would love to create more content uh, on creating turbo ios apps so please leave your ideas in the comments